Well, you mentioned uh, coconut oil earlier, and we talked about the movie theater. Can explain a little bit how we went from um, it's in movie theater popcorn and it's the worst thing we could ever put in our body to it's probably now one of the most popular health foods out there. And we're talking just 10, I mean, a very short span of time, 10, 15 years where it's gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. How did it, did it do that? And is there a concern that maybe we look at it again and maybe now it's bad for it, you know, 10 years later? Yeah, and, uh, you know, more of that's coming out, especially with epigenetics, where uh, that's where a lot of times you'll see splits in the research of it's beneficial for this group of people, but not beneficial for this other uh, group. And that's something that's more cutting edge. Uh, so that's, that's further down the line. But this all came about, uh, again, through the 1960s when that diet heart disease hypothesis really started to develop. And it was based on, on three principles, uh, the first being that Saturated fat, in general, leads to higher total cholesterol and LDLs. And that's, that's proven in, in research, and it makes sense. Uh, physiologically, cholesterol is a transport molecule. It's how it carries fat around the bloodstream. And so the more fat that you eat, yeah, your total cholesterol and total LDL will increase. So that, the first assumption is correct, uh, based on everything we know. Mm -hmm. The second assumption is that total cholesterol, total LDL, lead to higher cardiovascular disease risk. And that's also proven. Uh, you look at, I mean, the whole statin industry was based on, yeah. on that premise of high total cholesterol, LDL, leads to higher risk of heart disease. But there's a third assumption that was also made with the diet heart hypothesis. And the media and researchers alike both made sort of this mistake. And they linked, because total dietary fat intake, increased LDL, total cholesterol, and independently total cholesterol, LDL was linked to heart disease risk and death. They then assumed that higher levels of fat intake then led to cardiovascular death. And that has been not proven in the research. And so that was a big jump. Uh, and there's more context there. There's more gray area to be figured out. And that's more of what we've figured out in the last 10, 20 years. And the key, the key issue there is HDL. Uh, when you eat high levels of saturated fat, yeah, it raises your total cholesterol. It raises your total LDL. It also raises your HDL. And that effect on the HDL is actually higher. And so certain ratios, uh, like total cholesterol to HDL, which is a good marker, stronger marker for heart disease risk than any one in, by itself, that actually improves because you're improving the HDL level to a higher degree. And so that, that's one marker. Other markers, uh, there's a marker called lipoprotein A, which is a measure of stickiness of your blood and clotting potential. That also lowers with higher saturated fat intake. Uh, you could also look at other markers of heart disease, like HSCRP, uh, C-reactive protein, which is a nonspecific marker of inflammation. And so it could be infection-induced. It could be... Uh, diet-induced, you know, stress-induced, where there's a, it's a bigger picture of what's really going, what's really oxidizing these LDLs in the first place. Um, so the, the, the key is that, that effect on the HDL, which just seems to be ignored uh, by, by the sort of the analysis of, of the research that has been done.